Good morning! It is Friday and I'm heading to my six week appointment. I'm running a little bit late. I have to go get gas and put air in my tire because the tire pressure keeps changing with how cool it's getting. But we'll check in after my appointment, but I have breakfast, which is a chocolate protein shake. I know, bizarre. Um, I'm feeling really good this morning, so I was like, that kind of sounds good. And then an apple. So far, knock on wood, I've only had one morning where I felt bad, but like I said, we'll check in and chat throughout this video, but I need to go because if I'm not 15 minutes early, I am late. <laughs> Tell me if you're like that. I just always have to be early to everything. All right, gas, quick air tire fill up, and off to my appointment. Hello, I just got to my appointment and I am exactly 15 minutes early. So I thought, you know what? I can pop on and say good morning, hello. Let's do a quick chat. So I've just been sipping on my protein shake and the apple was so good. It's this new apple that was at Trader Joe's. I think it's called a honeybee. If you go to Trader Joe's, find them. They are so good. I also have my lemon lemon, lemonade with water and an extra lemon. I think that's the reason why I haven't been getting morning sickness. So let's do a quick catch up and then I'll run in and I just have blood work today. I don't have an ultrasound. My ultrasound is scheduled from two weeks from today and I honestly cannot wait. So I'll be eight weeks at my first ultrasound and I only have today my eight week appointment and then my 10 week appointment at my fertility clinic and then they are discharging me to a regular OB. So I did not film last week at my five week appointment. It was just blood work. Today is also just blood work. They're just making sure like my meds are still solid. My levels are good. They'll start to fluctuate a little bit, but they like to keep an eye on them. They also checked my HCG again last week and then they're going to check it again today. Just like standard. Um, which I really appreciate. Um, I did not have to go in Tuesday for blood work because my blood work was so good last Friday that they're like, you don't have to come in, just come in on Friday. So I feel like I always have to prefer, like say this, but having an FET, a frozen embryo transfer is so different than a natural pregnancy. Obviously my body is on a lot of medications. Um, my, my blood work is always being checked. There's so many different things. So I always feel like I have to say that because it's just so different than a natural pregnancy. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Last week after my appointment, my blood work was so good that I was moved from high risk. Almost everybody who goes through fertility is placed on high risk until your blood work is solid. And sometimes they're not moved off a of high risk depending on like pre-existing conditions, your weight, um, uh, your u the health of your uterus, um, all those things, you might be high risk. And I was removed from high risk last week, which was awesome. Honestly, my coordinator, who's like my nurse, said we never really thought you were going to be high risk, but you're placed on high risk until your blood work keeps coming back like solid, your HCG is rising, et cetera, et cetera. So I get to go see a regular OB, which makes me so happy, <laughs> like so happy. I have one referred to me I called them on Tuesday but they didn't call me back so I'm gonna call them again today if I don't hear from them I'm actually gonna stop in the office on Monday and be like hi I tried calling you because I only have a month before my appointment there and I would like to solidify that like they are gonna be my OB unless I need to look for someone else and I'm impatient and I don't like waiting <laughs> and to me I'm like if I called you Tuesday and it's Friday I haven't heard back from you like I'll call you again and I get that people are busy but yeah so what else? Oh, so I had one morning like before we even had confirmation with our doctor, it was like, oh, it was a week post FET. So it was seven days post FET that I woke up with horrible morning sickness. And I remember thinking that morning, if this is how it's going to be, like, I don't know how I'm going to live my life. <laughs> like it was pretty bad. I just felt like, okay, don't judge me for saying this but have you ever drank too much tequila, had a little too much fun, didn't eat enough food, and then the next morning it felt like the, the boat was rocking and you just felt terrible? That's how I felt. <laughs> Most of my friends understand, so if you don't, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> but that's how I felt that morning. I end up 
getting up, going back to bed, and then feeling much better when I re-got up. I got up, took my meds, was up for like an hour, felt terrible, went back to bed, felt good. No morning sickness sense, which my clinic was actually surprised last week when they asked me like, how are you doing, how are you feeling? I was like, I'm just so tired. The amount of tired that I am is mind blowing to me because I am the type of person who always has been go, go, go. I'm good with like five, six hours of sleep every single night. I get up, I work out, I go to work. I'm just go mode. I have a hard time shutting off my brain. I have a hard time falling asleep. Um, as long as I'm going, <laughs> I continue to go. Uh, not the case. I am so flipping tired all the time. I get up in the morning, take my meds, sometimes go back to bed, sometimes nap on the couch. Uh, as soon as I get home from work, I usually like shower or eat dinner. I used to stay up, watch a show with my husband. Now I just like completely fall asleep. He calls me from work and like checks on me throughout the day and he always jokes like, oh, I don't wanna catch you napping because sometimes I am literally napping. I'm thankful I have a job that is very, very flexible so I can get a nap in the afternoon because it gets to the point where I feel like I'm almost, I don't know how to say it, like I am, uh, I am shutting down so much that I can't even, my brain's not even firing. It's wild. First trimester problems. So I'm really, really fatigued. No morning sickness yet. I think it's also because like as soon as I get up, I eat something and I eat something right before I go to bed. Um, and I'm always drinking lemon water. So maybe that's helping me, I don't know. I know morning sickness is really genetic dependent. Both my mom and my sister did not have a lot of morning sickness. So I'm hoping that like I also got those awesome genetics and you know, we'll see. So, oh, also I have not been able to work out yet. Even though I'm not high risk, my clinic m will not like release you or clear you to work out until your first ultrasound which technically today's week six I could have an ultrasound because you know everything should be formed but they we work they wait until week eight um and that's fine I feel like I'm so tired that I'll, honestly I don't know if I could work out right now um I feel like my body's just you know it's growing human and it's overstimulated and I did not anticipate feeling this way so I'm okay with that personally I still would love to like go for walks but they just said continue to take it easy until like the sack is completely formed once they go in for an ultrasound and hear the heartbeat then I'll be cleared and I'm fine with that again I'm not high risk it's just what they decide to do because you know like and that's fine so I'm good with that but my appointment is in six minutes so I'm gonna head inside and check in I'll be out in probably seven minutes because that's how fast they are uh, when she calls my HCG, I'll give it to you later today if you want because I think that's always so interesting. The first HCG check, I was at 358. The second one, I was at 1372. And we'll see how high we are today. It's really cool to me to see like how that works. I, I shared this before, but my clinic doesn't do a beta. I guess technically these are like all betas if you like were to look on Google, but they do do a pregnancy confirmation which is your first blood draw after your FT, FET, which is usually between 12 and 14 days. Mine was at the 12 day mark. It just depends on when your FET is, if the clinic's open, because they're not open on weekends. Um, so mine was at day 12. And once they have confirmed pregnancy, this is like the really nice thing. I don't know if every clinic does this. I know not every clinic in my city does this, but once my uh, clinic has a confirmed pregnancy, if it were to uh, miscarry, within that time the the after like after they have a confirmed pregnancy we get like i hate to say like a free transfer but we do get a transfer like on the house they will do another transfer which is awesome because it's so expensive and so as long as you have additional embryos um and you have a confirmed pregnancy so for me that's like a celebration in itself because once you get there it's like okay you can take a deep breath because financially it's insane so okay there's a lot of people going in and out of the clinic and I keep getting distracted and some people are like so smiley and happy and it makes me happy to see that and then some people don't look so happy and that makes me sad but I have to go get my blood work done I will see you after okay just left my clinic and I drove over to UPS unfortunately we have a mail situation going on in our community um, please let me know if this ha is happening anywhere else or if it's just a Vegas thing, 
uh, mail is just going missing. Like, lots of mail. Not even like a little bit of mail, a lot of mail. Um, packages, letters that say they've been delivered to me, my community members, like people live in my neighborhood, just gone. And I called the post office yesterday because it's been going on for like three or four weeks. Talked to a guy and he's like, well, there's nothing we can do if it says it's being delivered. And I'm like, okay, but like if it's being theft, like if it's thefted, like there's just like a lot of holes that don't make sense. So we have parcel boxes. Um, so if a package is delivered to your parcel box, you get a key in your mailbox for the parcel box. And I told him, like, if it's being thefted, there's also no keys being left. So that doesn't make sense to me because if I was a thief, I wouldn't be going through every single box. I would just be opening up the main mailbox and saving time. And there's, like, other little things that don't add up. Like, yesterday I said I had a package delivered at 1227. I got home around 3 o'clock, checked my mail. It was not there. So you're going to tell me within like two and a half hours in the middle of the day, this package just went missing. I don't know. Things just aren't adding up and I'm tired of it. Like I said, it's been going on for a couple of weeks and it's not just me. It's like all of my neighbors, everybody's fed up with it. So I just told my husband, like, I'm going to go open a PO box because we can't be having this anymore. I don't trust USPS at all. So I'm sorry if you work for them. You're probably great. But the people that deliver here are not great. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, it just seems so bizarre to me. I don't know. So I'm going to open a P.O. box, which I used to have a P.O. box um, until we moved. Um, and then I got rid of it because the location I was actually at USPS. I was at a postal um, box. And it was just so far from our house that it wasn't convenient to go to. So I canceled it. And I was always going to open a new one and never did. So if you want my P.O. Box information, it's down below. No, I do not think it's weird if you send me something. I actually send stuff to my favorite YouTubers. A couple of my favorite YouTubers had babies last year. And I sent them presents. So no, I don't think it's weird. I've had a couple people ask me on Instagram like, Hi, I'm not trying to be weird or creepy, but I'd love to send you something. That's fine. I do the same thing. I feel like we connect with people. And we feel like, you know that sisterly bond so if you would like to send me something it's down below you don't have to don't ever feel like you have to but I put it down there because maybe you're like me and you just feel a bond with someone and you want to give them something that's totally totally fine I've also had questions on Instagram about a baby registry yes we plan to do baby registry um, and if you would like that I can send it like or link it down below but it probably won't happen for like another couple of months yes I feel like everybody does baby registry it's just like the easiest way we plan to do one so again, you don't have to gift us anything that is never, ever, ever expected. It's like so sweet when people ask though, um, because I feel like you're a soulmate to me. Like you understand gifting is my love language. I love to gift people things. Um, so like, I understand that if that's also your love language. So I've talked to you every single time today in the car. You probably think I've never moved, but I promise I had blood work done. I don't know if you can see my my band-aid which I can probably take off it's been a few minutes and I will probably check in with you when my clinic calls with my numbers I'll just like turn on the camera while I'm talking to my coordinator I want to get home and do a lot of work before I take a nap I'm not gonna lie even though I went back to bed this morning after taking my PIO and didn't get up until 7 I don't know I just I'm already feeling the tired come on so my goal, game plan it's like 8 a.m. right now I want to work as much as I can, get as much YouTube work as I can done until noon, sleep from noon to one. My husband should be home around that time, and then hopefully I can make it to seven o'clock tonight, because that's what I've been doing, and <laughs> it's been really hard, I'll be honest. Like, it's wild to me how tired I am. Again, it, I was not expecting it, um, and I, I have to be honest, like, I don't like unsolicited advice whatsoever. A lot of people feel me when I share things on Instagram, they totally feel me. And then of course there's like a handful of people that like don't get it, <laughs> but I have some really good YouTube friends and we were all at a house in Laguna about a year ago and they all have had babies since, or they were new moms when we were there. And we've been talking a lot this week and I'm like, I just don't think people understand that like I wanna experience this all on my own. It's my first time, I'm excited. Like I don't want you to like drop in my DMs and tell me like 50 different things of what to expect. Like I clearly know that pregnancy is a lot, but I wanna experience this on my own and share 
all of these things. Like I knew I would be tired. I didn't know I would be so dog tired that I could literally sleep all day. <laughs> but like, it's fun to experience these things. Um, I don't know, it just like, I don't like the unsolicited advice and it happened so quickly, <laughs> so quickly. Um, it happened with like IVF too and I get that just some people, maybe that's their love language. I try to be understanding, but just remember not everybody loves that, okay? So if you're someone in real life who gives unsolicited advice, maybe check to make sure that person doesn't mind because there are some people that don't mind. Um, that's, you know, just an individual thing. I don't know how I got talking about this when we were talking about the USPS service, but I also um, need to do other things besides talk to you guys right now. So I will check in with you when my clinic calls. Okay, you can still kind of hear it, but it's not like it was. Now I'm winded from walking up the stairs. Who's the girl that did an ultra marathon in March? She's long gone. I'm about to watch some Gilmore Girls. I am trying to stay awake. I do plan on taking a nap, but I've had a very productive morning. Uh, went to the clinic, got a PO box, came home, did two loads of laundry. The last one's finishing up. Um, made a really delicious lunch. Oh my God, so good. You can see that video if you want. I'll link it down below. I put it on my other channel. I um, was doing a little bit of computer work, fighting sleep, and yeah, the reason I'm trying to stay awake is because my clinic hasn't called me yet, and they usually close early on Friday, so I know I should have a call soon, so I'm trying to stay awake until after they call. Hopefully, it's in the next like 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to take a nap, but I had to move. I was actually on my downstairs at my desk working on my computer, and then I decided, you know, I just want to like work from my bed which is a terrible idea especially when you're pregnant and tired <laughs> so i went to my bed and was like fighting sleep so i came out to the couch put on the tv i was just like typing and stuff so i could have background noise and like oh my gosh but that kind of did help and then i thought okay i will flip the laundry grab my camera and hopefully the clinic will call soon and then i'm just gonna go straight down I have had a very intense craving today for a salad i haven't had a salad in a really long time because salads have been like an ick for me but today i'm like craving a salad so i might go to the salad we have like this salad place where you can go and like get these big big huge salads so if i wake up for my nap and it still sounds good i'm gonna go get a salad because anytime you're pregnant and a vegetable sounds good you jump on it because i feel like everybody has their own issues like for me i feel like i'm really into comfort foods right now they feel good they taste good but like vegetables salads all my normal foods no those are all eggs so all right i'll catch you when my clinic calls guess who fell asleep like hardcore and missed the call from her clinic <laughs> no big deal i always just tell them if i don't answer please just leave me a voice message because i'm probably just busy and that way it saves me a, like time from calling them back um hormone levels are awesome uh 900 900 900 I'm not awake yet. 9,980 was HCG. Continuing on with meds, they all look good. And my ultrasound got moved up. I'm so excited, it got moved up by four days. So that's awesome. I'm not gonna tell you the date because I don't want you guys to know, but I go in very, very soon. Wow, like that's just like crazy to me. It feels like everything's moving so fast. Now I'm just waiting for my husband to come home so that way I can tell him the ultrasound date moved so he can get that day off, so. Also, I have meds coming. I think this is my last med order if I timed it correctly because I should have exactly 30 days left of meds tomorrow and I only need 30 days from tomorrow, like starting tomorrow, if that makes sense. So I should have plenty. So I have um, some estrogen tablets coming and it should be enough to last me an entire month. And then everything else I have, I should have plenty fingers crossed I calculated correctly. If not, I'm gonna have them break it down to a smaller like uh, amount because everything comes in a 30 day supply and I don't want 30 days worth. So if I have to run over, I'm gonna see if they can drop a new prescription that's like for less, if possible. If not, it is what it is. It happened with my egg retrieval meds too. I had too much, so I have 
that was just hanging out at my house just in case I had to do another egg retrieval. You just never know. But that should be here soon. Honestly, this is the time of day where I am like so groggy after my nap that it takes me a little bit to wake up. So I'm just probably gonna chill for a little bit, work on my computer, and then get my estrogen when it gets here. 